Let's take a look at one other gesture that's going to be really helpful before we begin our next model. You'll probably notice when you open a new SketchUp file that you always get a standard um, scale figure. And there's something kind of unique about these, these figures. Uh, you notice that as you orbit around them, they are always facing you. You really can never see the back side of them and they are, um, they're, they're rotating on their own little axis. This is going to be something that we work on in this video and we're going to show you why it's really important. Um, and we're going to make our own. First things first, let's start with just a very basic plane. And I'm going to draw this plane along the blue axis. So I've drawn a plane. You'll notice that as I rotate around it, it's nice and solid. I need to make this look a little bit unique so I can make sure that I uh, can see you as it rotates. So I'm going to make it a group first, then open it up. And using the freehand tool, I'm just going to trace some sort of a funky shape. And I'm going to do some spikes on this side so it's kind of obvious. And then up here like this, and then like bubbles on this side. So it's distinctly unique as far as what side is what. Now I can go ahead and delete the things I don't need. So I've deleted all the shapes I don't want. So I want to make this rotate so that every time I move around it, it faces me just like the scale figure that comes in default. How do I do that? I'm going to select this. And now that it's a group, um, I'm going to, instead of right click, make component like we normally do, we need to, we need to change our thinking a little bit. So I'm going to explode it. So it's now exploded. It's an ungrouped, it's an ungrouped object. So this is the beginning of starting to think about when to ungroup things using both follow me and when you're trying to create a 2D face me component. Uh, it's always a good habit to group things when you start. I, 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 keep, I would keep that habit of every time you make a shape, group it, because it will become so second nature that you won't even think about it. And then when you explode something, you'll actually be cognizant of what you're doing. So now that it's exploded, I, I will select the entire thing, right click, and go to make component. So if you make a component out of an exploded or ungrouped object, you get a few more options. You can name it, you can describe it, you can glue it to things, which we're not gonna do. Most importantly, you can set the component axes. I'm not really that curious, or I don't care that much about naming it yet, because I'm not really working on a majorly complicated model. So for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the component axes. Right now, the axes are set to this corner. Because we are working in a nice, clean model, I can set the axes so that they are aligning with what with, with the axes as they are. That's the way I want it to start. So <clears throat> I'm going to go right to that center point. I haven't clicked or anything like that yet. I click to that center point and then I start moving my mouse around. So I can see that my mouse is glued to that red axis. So what it's wanting me to do is it's wanting me now to set the red axis. So I will move my mouse into a position so it's really clear to me that I'm on the red axis because I want the red axis to match with the red axis for this, uh, for this shape, or for the full model, I should say. So I click again, and now that's setting the red axis. Now what's happening? It's glued to the green axis. So it wants me to set the green axis next. So the next thing I'll do is I'm, gonna, I'm just orbiting around so that I can see that my green axis also aligns. So I'll click again to set the green. So my, com my component now has, I've done the first step, which is establishing the center of it and then aligning the axes with the axis that's in the model. Next step, make sure to check always face camera. I'm not really worried about shadows yet or type. Right now we're just gonna, we're just going to make sure that we, we always face camera. And of course, replace selection with component. This should be checked by default already. If it's not, just make sure it's checked. Now create. Now what happens? It's rotating along its center point. And if I open it up by double clicking on it, you can see that the axes are there. It won't rotate when you've opened it up so that you can work on it, which is nice. And then when you close it, it's gonna always move. So that's basically how they did this one. So this is really helpful. So it's also, this is really helpful if we're working on a, 
<clears throat> on a shape that we've made in, in SketchUp, or if we've got a 3D object that we want to make sure that wherever we go, it faces us. And we'll get into why we would want that when we start getting into the model. Now let's look at bringing in images, because <clears throat> I think it's very, very important and very helpful to replace really complicated 3D objects with 2D images that look really good that always face you. And um, we'll get into that also when we start making the model, but just for now, things that, that make sense are plants, flowers, um, anything that's kind of radial, like a, uh, a chandelier or a big vase or something like that, anything that is really complicated, uh, you know, some sort of a fixture that's off of the ground, that a fountain, that anything that you want it to look the same from all sides. Um, and that you don't necessarily want to bring in as a big crazy 3D object. Okay, let's take a look at um, what we can find online. I, I did a little, a little search for a person standing up with silhouette, and I also wanted a vector because I just wanted to make sure that, that I would be able to, without having to go into Photoshop, that this would be something that when I brought into the model, is going to have, it's not going to have white all the way around it. And I can tell that it's not because it's got these, uh, the gray, the gray and white grid that indicates that that's transparent. So I take this, um, I take this image and I drag it into a folder. Okay. Now I'm going to import that as an image. First thing I want to do is just with, with a rectangle or a big box, making this as a group. And I'm just going to make a big box here that I'm going to paste this up against. I'm going to give myself a guide in about six feet. We're going to say that we're, that this guy's about six foot tall. Now I go to file, import. I navigate to that, uh, to that folder. So I select that PNG. Notice I can't select the PNG unless I've gone to format and made sure that I'm importing the portable network graphic because that's the type of fold, that's the type of um, extension this is. It's a PNG. Import. <clears throat> and then starting on the face of this, I just click until I've dragged it in. This is basically like we did with the with the uh, plan. We're just bringing in a a uh, um, graphic image and we are scaling it up. But this time I'm not going to scale it up using the tape. I'm just going to scale it up visually. Okay. Let's move this out of the way. Whoops. It won't move because it is glued to it. So let me go ahead and delete it. Now. Here's what I'm going to do. Delete that guide. So edit delete. Guides. This is something that needs to be exploded before it can be made into a component. So my other two face me components are working the way I want them to. This is not. So what do I have to do? I have to double click on it. Make sure I select the entire thing. Right click and make component. I have to set the component axes and I want the axes somewhere right in the middle. So it's easy actually to just snap to that midpoint. So click once to establish the midpoint. Now I have to establish the red axis. So I click once for the red, and then I click again, orbiting around just so that I can be really sure that I'm on that green axis, and I click again for the green. I would say that this is something that you might wanna do in, your, in, its, in a separate file. It's always easier to make these to make these components kind of in a vacuum than it is in a really, really complex file. And then you just can copy and paste them into your big file after you're done. Because it's so much easier to see the axes and to see the, the, what you're working on if you don't have a lot of stuff in the way. Okay, so I've set the axes. Now I want to always face camera and then create. Great, so now wherever I go, this scale figure is gonna follow me around. Because I don't ever wanna to get to a scene where I see like a weird angle where he's just slightly, you know, off to the side. I want him to always be facing me. The final thing I need to do, because I don't want to see these lines anymore, is I need to open this up by double clicking on it, select each line and hide it. So I'm selecting one at a time each line and I'm hitting H for hide, or I'm hiding them by going to edit hide, but H is faster. Then click out in space. If I were to unhide right now, those lines are going to come right back because it SketchUp remembers that I just hid something. So let me Apple Z or undo that. What I have to do, and this is kind of a little bit of a cheat, is I have to make a dummy shape, group it, 
and hide it. Now if I unhide it, those lines don't come back. So what I basically have done is I've broken the chain. SketchUp remembers if I were to have unhid those lines right after I hid them, it remembers, what's the last thing you did? You hid something. Now you're asking me to unhide. So I'm going to unhide those lines. But if I, not confuse it, but if I break the chain by then making something, doing a couple of actions like grouping, then hiding that, then unhiding it, it's like somehow that chain has been broken. And now because those lines are contained within the component, it won't unhide those lines unless I open up the component and then do it and do unhide all because now I'm actually in the component and I'm saying unhide everything in here. I don't want to do that. So the way to hide those lines around the uh, around a 2D component that you've brought in is to break the chain by making a dummy. Okay, so this is just a quick overview. We're going to do a few more of these, plenty more actually when we get to the model, but this is the um, the basics for how to make these 2D components, which are really, really important and really useful.